Adam! You're hurt! It is nothing. A piece of the flying machine grazed one of my... <clears throat> wings, is all. That's no grace. It looks bad. Let's get you seen too, Gwilym. You've done your bit. Thank you, Martha. But there is one more thing first. I must tell you of the Knight's Nexus. It features heavily in the memories of my kind. There can be only one Lord of Dragons, as you know. When one dies, the next inherits the knowledge of their predecessor, of all their predecessors. That knowledge now dwells within me, and I would pass it on to you. Many centuries ago, in the time before the rift between humans and fairies arose, there was a sacred spring. From that spring, true knowledge flowed. In time, there appeared one who hungered to make that knowledge theirs and theirs alone. One who would come to be known as the Knight's Nexus. But it was not merely knowledge that the Nexus craved. No, it craved much more than that. It wished to consume all things, living or otherwise. Animals died, plants withered, the seas and the skies lost their color. Humans and fairies could do nothing but await certain destruction. But then the light of salvation shone forth. Four heroes were chosen by the crystals and tasked with saving the world. They did battle with the Nexus and emerged victorious, but the Nexus could not be destroyed. Instead, the power of the crystals was used to seal it away. Peace returned to the land. But in such times as the crystals' power weakens, the Nexus threatens to rise again. And in such times, only the restoration of the crystals' power may deliver us from peril. Maintaining the crystal's power was the sacred duty of the House of Musa. We have carried out the ceremony by means of which it is restored every 200 years since time immemorial. But the crystals were stolen, and their power has since been drained. It will soon be depleted entirely. It must be replenished before it is too late. We must return to the crystal's resting place. Then climb atop my back. Let us make hay. <sighs> You're not going anywhere. Not with your wing like that. Adele is right. You must rest, Gwilym. Forgive me. There is nothing to forgive. Without your help, we would not have been able to recover the crystals at all. There is a path hidden behind a certain waterfall in Halcyonia. If we take it, we can be a muser before too long. Come along, everyone. <laughs> oh, I can hear you. Oh, yes, I can hear you. It'll be time for you to wake up soon. And when you do, we can finally get rid of all the horrible humans! So what if it gets rid of everything else as well? I've never liked this world. The sooner it's all gone, the better. <laughs> Despicable! Oh, it is, isn't it? All of it! All of them! Which is why we're going to get rid of them! Every last one! Such a pretty color! I can't wait to watch it all come crashing down! <laughs> hmm. That's very foreboding. And it's nice to get some lore drops, but, um... I'm gonna be honest... 
we're not going to be dealing with that anytime soon. Hello there, friends, and welcome back to more Bravely Default 2. Last time, we took down Adam and obtained the Wind Crystal. Unfortunately, we were able to reunite with Edna, but we couldn't stop whatever she has planned, and that doesn't look good from what we saw. Anyways, today, while we could make our way immediately to Musa and see if we can't stop Edna, especially since things look pretty dire, I think it's best if we take this time right now to assess what's happening in Excellent and help people around the areas. I will go ahead and preface this right now. Today will be the start of a pretty long series of episodes covering the side quests we have not seen or tackled yet. So, strap in, because this is gonna take a little bit. I am going to be covering close to about 30 side quests in the next few episodes, and so things are going to be really cut close together and tight. And I'll be making sure to try and segment these things as well as I can to make sure it is easy to follow. But for today, we are going to be hanging around in Rheimdahl, as this is definitely the place we have dealt with the least, since I didn't tackle any side quests while we were here for the first time. We do have the gold hairpin that Adam dropped, which will uh, reduce our MP consumption by 25%, which is a very, very good item. But real quick, I'm going to head to Rheimdahl before we talk about anything in more detail. Okay, now we're here. As we can see... There are so many quests for us. We will not be tackling all of these today, but there are a lot of them that we're going we're going to be making a pretty big dent in them. I guess is probably the best way of putting it. First things first though, let's go and say hi to our favorite old lady and see what kind of rewards we got. We had a lot of stuff coming up with uh, the airship stuff line uh, stuff. So, that was a mumbo jumbo of words I just said right there. Let, let you know what? Screw it. Let's just let's just see what was going on. Quaj's treasure. Boost your bone physical attack, okay. They also found medium experience orb, okay. Jinshin's treasure. Speed, rule, uh, 6854, medium experience orb. And then Connor's treasure is physical defense. I have no idea if any of those, outside of maybe like Connor, is a slur, so I apologize if uh, any of these names are terrible. The game does warn you to not to do that, but you know, you know the internet. Anyway, let's go ahead and set up another expedition, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the Hellblade. We have a nice, well, I guess it's not a round number, it's technically 23 jobs, but I mean, at least, at least it looks cool enough. We've got a very full job list here. The Hellblade, their specialty is deal with the devil. 8% of their HP and MP is restored at the end of each turn, but if they're knocked out, it will reduce their BP to negative 3. Basically, this allows you to be a pretty decent self-sustain tool, especially as a job that's going to be utilizing their HP and MP a lot. Um, but it also is the job that punishes you the most for dying. So it is a very, very important skill for you to learn how to micromanage your HP and MP without putting yourself into harm's way, I guess, or just leading yourself into death's door. Their special ability is Ruin Gust Sword. Strike all enemies with a powerful, non-elemental magical attack, which they, with a bonus effect of a physical attack boost by 15%. So this is interesting because the Hellblade has a pretty decent spread between physical and magical attack damage. However, as we'll see, pretty much everything they have is a physical-based attack, which is really interesting. Um, so... The Hellblade can sort of play as a, uh, as, as a minor magic attacker if you have, like, Oracle or Arcanist or Red Mage as a sub-job. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, this, this job is interesting. As you can see, Ruby Blades, along with the other Blades abilities, they all pretty much do the exact same thing. They just have different elements tied to them. Then there's Dread Blade, which is an attack that can attempt to fill someone with Dread, and then you can take advantage of that with Terrorize, which will do more damage if an enemy suffers from Jet. You can kind of see how they can work with that there. And especially because there are a lot more enemies in this game that can be affected by Dread, especially bosses, than you might think, this could be a pretty decent combination. 
Their biggest uh, claim to fame is probably Surpassing Power, which will increase the uh, damage cap from 9,999 to 99,999. We saw earlier that Adele was able to comfortably hit the damage cap with Milk Poison. She'll be able to do a lot more damage <laughs> if we were able to get this onto her. Uh, which, speaking of, let's go ahead and start moving our jobs around a little bit. During this side quest chain, I'm going to be wanting to max out as many jobs as I can, so we're going to be tying up some loose ends here. Okay, with our jobs picked out and our stats all healed up, it's now time for us to start tackling some side quests. Now the question becomes, where do we even start? Because there are just so many. Well, I think probably the best thing to do is to start talking around with the locals. There are some very important NPCs that we can see around Rheimdahl, but we'll leave them for probably a little later on. We'll see what this old man has for us. I wonder how many more chances I'll have to savor that special flavor. So, the joys of spring. Spring is in the air! Oh, for the taste of horsetail buds. Sadly, you don't find many up here in the snow. Down in the meadows of Halcyonia, though, that's a different matter. So this guy will have us go to Halcyonia to obtain some horsetail buds. I'm not too against the idea of actually traveling to other nations mid-episode now, because we're not having to deal with dire stories. So we're not we're gonna be tackling that right now. We also have gone fishing. My favorite fishing spot has been overrun by monsters. In the good old days, the tiddlers were the only fit well, the only ones doing the biting, but not anymore. Can, can't someone do something? Taking care of some flying barrows will give us an adamant bangle. Pretty good. There's a lot of these, uh, you know, kill and collect or fetch and talk to this person kind of quest lines, so we're going to be just trying to take, them, take those down as soon as possible. <sighs> what did I do wrong? I just don't understand. I just don't understand girls, do you? Mysteries of the Heart. I was talking to my friend, and then she suddenly got really angry with me. I don't have a clue what I'm meant to have done. Would you mind checking, on on her, checking in on her? See how the girl is doing. That is a very interesting title. So that gives us... let's see here. Oh hey, there's Holograd, the last big piece of the continent we have yet to explore. So we have these three quests, let's go ahead and ex let's go ahead and wrap these up first. So if we see here, all of them except for Joys of Spring have us in Rheimdahl. So let's go ahead and take care of them there. This quest with the boy just has us going up to the northern end of the city, talking to her. Do you want something? You what? He wants to know why I got so angry. Who said I was angry? I mean, I'm just a bit... You know. Look, I saw him laughing with this other girl, and it just made me feel a bit... icky. That's all it was. It was no big deal, honestly. Let's just forget it ever happened. Ah, uh, yes. Uh... I'm not gonna get in the way of... You know, young kids figuring out what's, what stuff is, so I'm just gonna leave it at that. I see. So she doesn't like me talking to this other girl. Which other girl could she mean, though? I mean, there's probably 15 or 16 it could be. Uh, well, thanks anyways. Uh, at least now I know what's up with her. Best go ahead and ask her who she means. Oh dear. Yeah, I'm gonna stick- I'm gonna keep myself out of this mess. Now, this other quest that we have actually has us going and exploring Rheimdahl in its entirety. Well, not maybe not its entirety, but I will be exploring Rheimdahl in its entirety. So I'm going to put on Divining Rod as we explore this area, so we can see if we can't wrap up the remaining treasure chests that we haven't gotten. It has us, it has us going to this uh, frozen lake area, which I've actually avoided quite a bit of when we were going through Rheimdahl for the first time. So we get to kind of see this. Now, obviously, we don't skid across the floor, which is a little unfortunate. But we're looking for these little little screwballs right here. These are the Flanabarrows. We've already fought a few of these guys before. It isn't anything too crazy. Let's go ahead and just fault here and see if we can't just wipe these guys out. I don't have indiscriminate rage on, actually. I just realized that. That's okay. Seth should be able to take down a few of these guys. And then Adele should be able to wrap up the remaining of them. And, yeah, I mean, exactly, Seth, that was a piece of cake. So, there's all four of our planet barrows taken care of, with one extra on the side. Let's go ahead and grab this treasure chest, guarded by another rare monster. This one's a bit of an annoying rare monster, so we're just going to avoid him. We'll come back for him later. Now, there is another treasure chest over there. 
uh, closer to where Enderno is. So let's real quick check up on the northern end of the zone. Just another one of those rock formations we've seen around the areas before. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Treasure chest right here next to the bridge to Enderno. Giving us two healing blooms. How did I not see this one? I'm sure someone was yelling at me whenever I was going through this area initially. They're like, how'd you miss that? I know I probably was. Uh, Let's just sneak by this uh, snake boy and get ourselves another treasure chest. Power bracers, that would have come in handy. I would not want to touch this water right now. I actually just wouldn't want to be in Rheimdahl to begin with. I mean, okay, thinking on it, I, would, I said Halcyonia is definitely the place I would not want to be living. Uh, out of the places we've been to, I think Erndurno is still most likely the winner, just because it's a nice, cozy little village. It It's just kind of, it keeps to itself, and I kind of like the idea that you know everyone, you know, in, in a little town. Uh, well, I, I think that suburbs and whatnot are probably uh, a little bit more appealing to me personally. Being, if you grew up in a small little town where you just kind of know everyone, I feel like that has a nice little nice little vibe to it that you can't really get anywhere else. I mean, you literally can't. You live in a big city, there's no way you know everyone without being superhuman or something. Let's go ahead and go to Halcyone real quick before I turn in all these quests so we can get those horsetail leaves or... What are they called again? Or something. Horsetail buds. That was close. If we just buy, we can just get these by cutting grass, which is very good. It, that was actually literal that time. Um, usually the the red baseball diamonds are a little bit more obscure, but not this time, which is very good for me. Right over here, we get our second horsetail bud, and then we gotta walk over by the Vale of Size. Excuse me, coming through. Time to get our third horsetail bud and head back to Rheimdahl. Okay, hang on, real quick. While I was going back to Rheimdahl, I thought of something I haven't- I don't think I've talked about yet. I kind of under- I understand why they did it. But one big pet peeve I have with this game, and it's so- This is such a diva moment. This is such a little- such a tiny, tiny little thing that it, it actively does not matter at all, but it, it it's just a little thing for me. Why- did they put in Durno's fast travel point after Rheimdahl whenever you are most likely going to get in Durno first because it's on the way to Rheimdahl? I, I've always, there have been so many times where I've accidentally gone to Rheimdahl when I mean to go to Enderno because I'm just like, oh yeah, Halcyon in first, Savalon second, Wiswall third, we went to Enderno fourth, so it must be here. No, I accidentally mashed through and hit Rheimdahl and it's just, it's, it's really not that big of a deal, but... It's, it's just a small little thing that just irks me. You did it! The monsters are gone! Now I can fish myself silly! There is a rare monster over there, so you probably shouldn't be uh, too excited about that. Lots of whales, uh, massive big great ones. Oh, and sharks, we have to watch out for the walruses and polar bears. Polar bears. Polar bears, if you want to catch anything. Uh, yeah, don't mess with polar bears. They're very, very uh, nasty. And then this guy, you found some. There's lovely, there, there's lovely. Boil them, fry them, and roast them. Horsetail butts can't be beaten. Especially washed down with a nice cold drink. Oh ho, thank you so much. I can't wait to tuck in. Haha, <laughs> the joys of spring. There we go. Get ourselves some money, too. I would suggest you save some of your cash. We're going to be needing it, as there is one big pig dump in this game that we're going to be running into very, very soon. And so just... Have that stuff on on the ready. Hello there! I wonder what he's doing right now. Oh, just the thought of him makes my heart go pitter-patter. Pen pals! I've been exchanging letters with a man I've never met, and now I want to know what he's really like. I've been picturing someone mature, sophisticated, witty, and cool, but I'd love to know for sure. Uh, okay. Uh, so I guess we're just gonna- we're gonna be giving- getting a physical description of whoever she's writing to, which is- Interesting. And there's this guy right over here. I have to know more. I have to find out what really makes them tick. That's the spirit. Spirit monsters are so interesting, don't you think? I mean, do you think they're even alive or what? I need to investigate them up close to know for sure, but I'll need some bait to lure them in. Like some soul food or from defeated kitty cates or other sources. Now, okay. 
I was specifically going out of my way to make sure I had enough of these before we did the side quest. Because the best way to get this is by going back into the Serpent's Grotto and stealing or killing from the uh, stealing items or killing the kitty cates that are found in there. I believe they're just the regular Kate C's. That is very obnoxious in my personal opinion, so I've actively been saving my soul foods uh, for this occasion specifically. So we're just going to go ahead and turn this in. I've already told you where you can go and find them. You bring in thieves to try and steal them or just mow them down with indiscriminate rage plus counter savvy. You will be perfectly okay. I can tell you right now, this side quest gave me a lot of pain when I first played through the game, and is a big reason why the Serpent's Grotto does have a little bit of animosity for me, where I just did not enjoy going back and forth in that area. Now, there's still quite a few side quests for us down here. We've got that pen pal lady. There is one I want to make a brief mention about that we're not going to be doing. This one. This guy right here has a side quest that unlocks once you hit Chapter 4. However, it is... It, it, is a side quest pertaining to a, a super boss that is in the form of a rare monster, but it's a super boss for much later on in the game. So I won't be accepting this one just yet, but trust me, we'll get around to it eventually. There's also a certain someone over there, but we're not going to be talking to him today just yet. Let's go ahead and take care of this pen pal thing, and then... Yeah, we'll hold on to the rest of that in a second. Let's go to... Where does it want me to go? Where does this want me to go? Wiswold? Wiswald, okay. So we go to Wiswald. Here in Wiswald, as you can see, they also have their fair share of problems. <laughs> and remember, there are three areas in this in this city, so there's a lot more to see here. Uh, Roddy has a quest for us, but we're not going to be talking to him just yet. This is a Rheimdall-focused episode. Oh boy, it is busy in here. Uh, hey there. What's that? Do I write letters to a woman over in Rheimdall? Maybe I do. What's it to you? Oh ho, she thinks I'm mature, sophisticated, witty, and cool, you say. Aye, that sounds about right. As you can see, I'm pretty long in the tooth, so I think I qualify as mature. As for sophisticated, well, I collect dusty old trinkets, so that's a definite yes. Witty's right for sure. The regulars here don't always like my rep uh, repartee, but deep down, they know it's solid gold. And cool. You bet I am. My feet are blooming freezing! Ho ho ho! Told you it's funny. Oh dear. Uh, okay. I, I mean, we've got a... Pretty good idea of what her pen pal looks like, so let's go ahead and break the news to her. I was thinking on this as I was uh, talking about my opinions for each of the cities uh, a few days ago now at this point. It's been a while since I've recorded. Um, but one of one of the things I forgot to mention about Rheimdall and why it's probably my favorite city we've come to so far is because everyone here has Welsh accents and mostly Welsh names. There's a few like mythological references for some of them like uh, Gwydion and Ridian. Um, but uh, as a fellow Xenoblade Chronicles 2 enjoyer, Welsh individuals are uh, now some of my favorite uh, people and uh, voice actors. <laughs> I, I love me some Welsh accent. There you are. So, what was he like? Wow, so I was right. He really is mature, sophisticated, witty, and cool. Oh, be, my, be still my beating heart. This is what love feels like, isn't it? <laughs> that decides it. My next letter is going to be the big one. It's time to put my heart down on the page at last. Thank you so much for helping me take the plunge. And wish me luck. I mean... Uh... Yeah, uh, good luck, I guess? Okay, um... Alright, uh, there is one more quest I want to do here. And it's this guy, right here. You're travelers, aren't you? You didn't happen to see a merchant looking a bit lost on your way here, did you? We're business partners, you see, but I can't find him anywhere. He's probably looking for me, too, somewhere. Sorry, but I don't think we've run into anyone like that. Great! Now, a big important meeting's due to start any minute, and it looks like he's not going to make it. And he was so excited about this supposed wonder product he'd found over in Wizwald. I can't help fearing the worst. The last place I remember seeing him is in the Wayward Woods. The Wayward Woods? Uh-oh. Oh, now I've really got myself worried. I'd better go and look for him. Wait, but what if he turns up here while I'm gone? Listen, can you go and find him for me? I'll make it worth your while. Sure. It's probably for the best anyway. 
but we'll be right back. Luckily for him, we have a fairy who can guide us through the Wayward Woods. So, there we go. Look for the Lost Merchant. While we do this, I'll be going ahead and collecting the remaining treasure chests found in Rheimdahl. And maybe, maybe tackling one of the rare monsters? Again, yeah, I did say these episodes are going to be very full. So, there's going to be a lot of jumping around and trying to just complete as many objectives as we can. Because, while there is a lot to take care of, and we're going to be here for a while... Uh, I want to make sure that we can at, at least make some story progress within the next year or two. Oh, hello. Another quest here. There's nothing better on a chilly day than a nice warming stew. Am I right? Aren't I? Aren't I? So this has us collecting some snow cabbage. I believe if, if I'm right, this quest is sort of multi-part, but we'll go ahead and grab it uh, as, a, as an aside. Real quick, let's go back over here towards the Jaws of Judgment, because there's definitely some map we haven't looked around yet. For one, if we go all the way to the southwest end, we have a treasure chest for one right here. Very nice. With a great bow, which I don't think is better than the Artemis bow. Yeah, no, not, not, not by a long shot. Uh, a pun not intended, but now I'm taking credit for it. And then this is what leads us over to Holograd. This is where they were invading Wiz uh, not Wiz uh, Rheimdahl from. I don't think there's really anything for us here. Except for a treasure chest. Perfect. There we go. Sands of Time. That would have been really good for the, uh, what is it? The Dominic fight, because he has access to stop. I should have uh, written that down in my notes, that there was another one there. I said there was only two you could have gotten at that point, and I actually was wrong. There's another rock formation we can't do much with. Then there should be a rare monster right over here, plus our final Rheimdahl treasure chest. That's our rare monster right there. I am tempted to go and take them down. I do have a nasty surprise here for me, though. Oh, it's just more of these. Okay. Well, you can kill two birds with one stone here if uh, you <laughs> you get that uh, Flying a Barrow uh, quest and then just come here and take this uh, rare monster and the treasure chest down. There we go. We got plant food for that, too. Okay. And that gave us three medium JP orbs. I'll take it. That's a pretty decent reward. Okay, yep. Yeah, so I've decided to take on this rare monster. The most important thing to remember when going up in, into this fight is to bring one Thunder Talisman and a locket on each party member. I think I briefly mentioned this while we were in Halcyonia, um, but bringing these two accessories is going to be very, very important and will actually lock out this, this monster from being able to do much of their stuff. Otherwise, bring a few decent attackers and some self sustain and you'll be perfectly okay. Let's take this thing down. Watch out, guys. Okay, so this is Baba Yaga plus a Yeti and an Akaoni that are pretty strong. Now, the Yeti and Akaoni aren't really anything all that different, and Baba Yaga has two actions. I say two actions. They have access to Thunder, Thundaga, and uh, the ability to charm people. So you can g see why the lockets are very good. Let's go ahead and set up a rampart here, just to give us a bit of a breather when trying to fight the Yeti and Akaoni. Meanwhile, we're just going to be utilizing God's Beast Strike to try and take down the Yeti and Akaoni. One hit on both of them should be more than enough here to deal with them. Yeah, they're both going to die to that, for sure. And then let's go ahead and examine the Baba Yaga, which is a, uh, okay, pretty tanky. There's Love at First uh, Sight, I believe that was called, which doesn't do anything to us because we're immune to charm. And both of their friends are dead. So now we kind of just have free reign of them. I guess I haven't shown off the Spear Master's special move yet, so let's go ahead and just see what it's all about. Alrighty, I've got this. Fear not, my children. Let me show you the way. I shall endeavor to return the favor. Do you see it Look how huge that heal was, plus the active buffs that we get. This is a really good special move. And then we can just kind of chill here, I guess. We can just build up our resources if we need to. I'm going to apply an Aether to Adele because she does not have a lot of MP. Then we're just going to default spam here for a bit because, again, this boss cannot really do much to us anymore. Uh, they, they, they keep trying to charm us and it's not going to be doing anything. We're now going to use Elvis' turn here to do uh, Hurt So Bad, just boost our attack power. And now we're just going to have some fun here. Godspeed strike time. 
And then we'll do Steel Spirit to restore some MP. There we go, 8k, 8k, max damage, and we restored our MP back to maximum. <laughs> yeah, this guy really can't do much to us. We'll go ahead and Volation here and just heal our wound. So even if they do do Thunder Magic, they're not going to be able to do much to us. Here they go, there's Thundaga, immune, Thundaga, Thundaga, Thundaga. They just get back up, yep. <laughs> and then we're going we're gonna to shut up and dance on Seth here. And we're just going to go ahead and send him and do some Angons. And then we're going to do Spirit Surge. Just keep poking him, Spirit Surge, get our stats back up. And they have, let's just do another round of that. And they have 4,000 HP left. Let's go ahead and Kiraga Elvis. And let's go ahead and shut up and dance Adil. Get her back up. There's Thundaga, which, you know, single target will do a lot of damage, but we're not going to need to worry about that because we have Godspeed Strike and this will finish him off. Pretty simple encounter and we were able to max out Ranger. Pretty good. We also got the Sage's Staff. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, it has the ability to use, cast Raise as an item. That's not too bad. One of the big reasons to bring a White Mage is just kind of mitigated right there. Uh, it has a pretty decent amount of restorative power as well. So if I wanted Gloria to play a lot more focused on being a healer, she could do that. It also boosts her speed, not by much, but, you know, it's something. And we'll keep that in the back pocket for right now. There we go. Oh, Seth spotted some pig. That'll be nice. Let's go ahead and take care of that ultimate stew quest, and then we'll head over to the Wayward Woods, find that merchant, and then we'll wrap up for today. How's that sound? Right here, by Rhyme Doll, we can find the Snow Cabbage. And then we're giving the, given the mark to go find a Moon Onion. Now, the Moon Onion, I believe, is actually not in Rhyme Doll. So, we're going to need to travel elsewhere, I believe. Yes. It is somewhere in Halcyonia. I believe that's the dungeon where we cleansed the population of axolotls. So I'll see you there in just a second. Okay, we're here in this dungeon. Also, I moved Adele over to Hellblade, gave her dual wield so she can wield two swords. And I also boosted her level uh, up to job level three so she has access to at least a few abilities. Her sub job is Red Mage, that way she can use her own abilities and then immediately heal herself if need be. So, for example, we could do, like, I don't know, Ruby Blade, Ruby Blade, and then we could heal ourselves with Hilaga, and then just any damage we just took, we can just boop, heal it back. Perfect. We also have to deal with the Devil to help with that passive HP regeneration as well. We're almost at job level 12 on Elvis for Spirit Master, so I'll need to find something else to put on him. Oh, right, we can also get the treasure chests here now, because I have the ability to knock down trees. I totally planned that. Uh, let's see if we can't do that right. Oh, did I miss this one already? How did I miss that one? Huh. Okay, uh... I'm just bad at video games, I guess. I Trust me, I, I've played this game before. I know I've said that a lot, it's kind of become a recurring gag now, but man. I'm starting to wonder if I've played this game before. Moon Onion, there we go. That's what we came here for, but I'm also gonna grab that treasure chest. Finally finish off this area. There we go. Got 201 peak for it as well. Not bad. That tree was holding out on me. Let's see what was behind this all this time. Ah, oh, my old enemy. Ah, uh, the spirits of the axolotls have come back for the revenge. Well, I'm gonna kill them the exact way I did it normally. Conventional attacks! Sorry, pal's right. And with that, we maxed out... <laughs> there have been so many jobs we've maxed out in this one little dungeon. Oh boy. Alright, I'll see you back at Rhyme Doll. Ooh, an oak staff. That wasn't, that wasn't too bad. So upon further reflection, I've actually decided to swap Adele over to Spirit Master because I think getting Subjob Specialty 1 on her is actually going to be better for my overall progress. Now, I actually have to go into the Wizard Woods here to find the Flowery Fungus for this Ultimate Stew. I have no idea why I'm going to need this, but, you know, mushrooms are occasionally used in the stew, so I guess that makes a little bit of sense. I've also put Elvis on Pictomancer here because, well, 
he's already got it fairly high level, and just wrapping it up is probably for the best. I think I'm gonna wait to level up a Hellblade whenever I get over to Seth, because he's really close to finishing up Dragoon, and we'll see what Hellblade can do whenever he's working on it, rather than Adele. Now, I should've just taken that teleport pad now that I think about it. Uh, we're... Oh yeah, yeah, it was just literally right there. Hmm, okay, well, learn from my mistakes. This is the fourth or fifth time we've had to come back to the Wizwell Woods. I told you you'd be coming back here quite a bit for side quests. And I still think there's one more quest that requires us to come back here. Yeah, they, they got a lot of mileage out of this place. Where do I need to go now? Deliver the ingredients, okay, so it looks like we're done here. Okay, so I don't think I went over the Spirit Master's second specialty, so here it is. They're in Spirit. Spirited defense effects apply even when spirits are not present, and the effects of all spirit summoning abilities learned so far are applied automatically when the user has one or fewer BP. This is simultaneously one of the best and, in my opinion, also one of the most obnoxious special specialties in the entire game. Not only does it give you access to every single spirit's passive permanently, as long as you have one or less BP, which is really, really good since normally you can only have one of them active at a time for three turns, but it also is very annoying because of Purebringer specifically being able to remove a, a debuffs and buffs specifically buffs, meaning that it's really difficult to play around with if you have like a bard or a bastion or a monk. It's difficult to take use of their buffs if you have pure bringer just constantly removing them. There we go, you brought all the bits, that's lovely. Let's get to work on the greatest stew. That's it, bubble and boil, little stew. Simmer and sweeten. I don't know if the cold is the best place to be trying to make hot food, like out in the middle of the snow, but you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not going to uh, judge. We get ourselves a carving knife, which honestly isn't really all that worth it. But hey, that's another quest completed. Hopefully this merchant guy is not dead or has been lost for too long in the Wayward Woods, because now we're actually going to go and rescue him. Now thankfully we can just follow our red baseball diamond of holiness to, uh, to victory here, to just figure out where the merchant actually is. So there really isn't too much complexity here. And I also do apologize again if this episode feels a little more erratic than others, just because there's so much going on that I wanted to cover today, and I just have I had to try and find the best way to do it. Oh, yeah, these, these guys have damage for light. That's kind of annoying. Um, but yeah, I, I apologize if things seem a little too erratic, but I, I try to think of the best way to approach this stuff, and I sort of came up empty-handed other than just kind of just running at everything, guns blazing, and just kind of hoping it works. I'm gonna go ahead and put on the Discriminator Rage here, just so we can hopefully mow down these guys with just Seth. Maybe I can get some job levels up? Maybe I can just do one dungeon of Adele on Spirit Master, because I really don't want to spend more time with her on that job. Almost level 46 on everyone. Honestly, we, we are coming up on a pretty decent threshold to end off leveling on, which is pretty interesting. There's Levels start really not mattering all that much as you progress later into the game. It's more about builds and gear and jobs and strategies. But there will be a point where I will probably have a hard cutoff uh, where I just won't be leveling up, meaning I won't be doing fights as much anymore. And we are coming up to that point, but I don't think we need to worry about not getting enough jobs leveled up, or not being strong enough. So, there's that. And we just keep following this marker, and we'll eventually find our merchant friend. No sign of our guy here, but there's plenty of places to get lost around these parts. Ah! Uh, help! Somebody help me! That doesn't sound good. It came from over there. Quickly! There he is! Hey! Are you okay? Don't worry, we're here to help! Yep, we gotta take down a small little mini-boss here. We're definitely not too prepared in terms of resources, but we've got a salve maker here, so we can deal with that. Let's go ahead and set up a rampart, just in case. 
They do counter guardianship. Okay, that's interesting. Let's go ahead and widen area and in in ether here. Just give us some MP to work with. And then we'll go ahead and examine what we're dealing with here. Jealous Jody. That's that is a very very good name. About 35,000 HP, weak to dark daggers and swords, so Phantom works very well here. Uh, let's see. What can we do? Let's go ahead and apply Healthbringer here. That way we can, we don't have to worry too much about our HP. And then we can go ahead and start defaulting. Build up ourselves and then we'll hopefully just use Seth here to just mow these guys, uh, mow this guy down. Let's see if we can get a splatter going. There we go. That'll lower the resistances to everything by one, making Seth do a lot more damage. Let's go ahead and poke it with arrow real quick. I just wanted to see if it was weak to it, and now it is. That's very good. So then, let's go ahead and default again real quick. And I'm thinking we just keep defaulting here. Go ahead and lower the target's physical defense. And then we'll go ahead and go on the offense here with Seth. We'll use Spirits. Actually, let's start, since now we have it weakened, let's use Thunder Thrust, and then we'll use Spirit Search here. Poke it. Ooh, counters physical attacks. That's not great, but we can use Bossana here. Cleanse all of that. And let's see how Disaster does. I did not, I will not have the ability to do that last one, I just realized. That's still quite a bit of damage from a Spirit Master. I'll, res I'll respect it. Uh, let's get another indefensible teal going here, and then we'll just try to use some Neo Cross Slashes. Why not? And we'll end with a Spirit Surge if we somehow get around this not getting paralyzed. Oh man, we got a lot more debuffs that time. Let's go ahead and boss another that all away, except for Berserk, obviously, which is very frustrating. This guy's trying to wipe me out! Uh, we can just widen area and fix this all up real quick, though. Let's remedy that Berserk, which is very unfortunate. There we go, and then we can just form a widen area and X potion here. Pop us all up. Come around to Elvis' turn again. The guy is almost dead, which is very good for me. So let's actually widen area and Ether again. Give everyone some MP. And then let's go ahead and cast Sanctuary here. Set up shop that out, uh, so that all allied and enemy HP, MP, and BP cannot be changed until the user's next turn. Actually, no. Let's go ahead and just set up another Rampart. It's in the negative two, so we're we're pretty good just to kind of build ourselves up a little bit here. Let's go and lower some defenses again. The Dob should be going away here pretty soon, but we should be able to get one more turn of stuff here. Let's go ahead and use Angon. Maybe this will kill. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right, there's Dragoon maxed out for Seth, and uh, pretty decent progress on other jobs. <sighs> Thanks. Are you the merchant with the Wizwald connection? Your friend asked us to come find you. He did? Well, thank goodness you managed to trap me down. You really got me out of a jam there. I, I couldn't find my way out, and then... Those monsters started chasing me. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. You know why they call it the Wayward Woods, right? Oh, I do now. What a place. There I was, trying my best to get out, only to keep ending up back in the same spot. Oh, sounds like you've had quite a scare. Well, you're all right now. Come on, let's get you back to town. All right. Not much for us here in the Wayward Woods, so let's just head back to Rheimdall. I got another notification right there. I wonder if that's a... Uh... Oh, no. Uh, our buddy just found us some treasure. I'll take it. All right, I'll see you at Rheimdall. All right. Hello there, buddy. There you are! So you found him, then? Yeah, and not a moment too soon. He was about to get eaten by monsters. He's not joking. If this lot hadn't happened along when they did, I'd have been a goner for sure. Oh, you had me worried. I turned around and suddenly you were gone. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I was right with you the whole time, and then I looked up and you just weren't there. Those wayward woods are rotten though, aren't they? It's like they're designed to be deliberately confusing. Well, anyway, you're both here now, and in one piece too. 
We are indeed. Thanks again. I owe you more than words can say. Right. Are you ready for this meeting? Oh, you bet. The design to be deliberately confusing. Adele over there with a smug look on her face like, yeah, yeah, they are. <laughs> okay, let's wrap up with this party chat here. The Wayward Woods, the topic of discussion for today. There's something about plunging into the forest that really gets me going. It's, a, it's like stepping into a whole other world. Makes me want to just keep on exploring until I've rooted out every last secret there is to find, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. Guess there's an explorer inside us all, huh? You bet there is. Deep down, we all just want to roam the wilds, building dens and whittling implements. And do you wonder why we wind up having to go to rescue people who get lost? I can certainly see the appeal in the idea of exploring the woods, but one must be careful. Careful indeed. Where's the romance in careful, eh? Getting lost is half the fun. And the more lost you get, the more proud you can be when you finally emerge back into civilization. Back when I was training, I used to deliberately lose myself in the wayward woods, just so I could find my way out to back get back again. You did what? That's so dangerous. Anything could have just happened to you. I but it didn't, did it? And it sharpened my senses like you wouldn't believe. Deliberately getting lost. It does sound very dangerous. Yeah, I'd say you're lucky to be alive. But it really sharpened your senses. That's pretty cool. G God, don't get any stupid ideas. One reckless idiot is more than enough. I don't know, Seth is pretty daring himself. He's a sailor after all. But I think that's a good place to wrap up for today. We did a lot, and we got some revelations about what exactly the Knight's Nexus is. So... I'd say it was a pretty fulfilling day. Next time on Bravely Default 2, we continue helping out around Rheimdahl, though what we're going to be doing is definitely a little bit more impactful, I would say. So, with that said, I'll see you soon.